This is the Verbal Nonsense Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, we bring you all the nonsense verbally. I'm Todd. I'm Joel. All right. Thank you for thank you for coming. I'm gonna drink this coffee now uh, while Joel t- talks about his first topic. And my first topic is going to be Nazi soda. I love Nazi soda personally. It's because he let it slip on what it is. I'm actually calling uh, BS on this story. Well, you would be 100% wrong, Mr. Todd. Um, Back during World War II, uh, when the embargo was put on Germany, nothing going in, nothing going out, Coca-Cola didn't want to lose their revenue uh, in that area. So what they did is uh, they looked into making sodas that didn't use the cola ingredients. Hence, hmm. orange soda, grape soda, and the like. But they Two also of my favorite sodas are orange and grape. So, they did also, at the time, didn't want the Coca-Cola name linked to that. Hence, Fanta. Hail Fanta. I love... Whoa, what? <laughs> Hail Fanta. It was Nazi soda. That is not Nazi soda. That is Nazi soda. No, not when you want a Fanta. It's not. It's not how Fanta. Don't you want to want to Fanta? Don't you want to? You anybody remember that commercial with the Brazilian girls? Oh, it was. It was too spicy for TV. I'm serious. That was a spicy commercial. So much Brazilian um, ladies telling me I want a Fanta, and yeah, I want a Fanta. I love Fanta. <laughs> I, I've tried every. Every Fanta flavor that has ever come across the uh, the shelves, I've tried the mango, I've tried the the guava guava peach, which was actually better with vodka than um, from the bottle. I I love Fanta. Strawberry Fanta is my favorite. I like orange Fanta with homemade style vanilla ice cream. That is delicious, absolutely delicious. And um, Nazis. If they were, uh, if they were legitimately drinking Fanta, they probably would have put up a bigger fight, knowing that that you know, if they just stood behind Fanta and said, "This is what we're fighting for, not to exterminate minorities and the Jews or world domination." If they just wanted a land where people could drink Fanta in peace, then. I think they would have had a better time. You know, I think, yeah, I think if Japan, the already going. well, they could have switched. They could have said, you know what? We've messed up. All right. We, we, I know we said some bad things and we've done a lot of bad things, but we've, we've even taken apart our trains. We're not transporting Jews to concentration camps anymore. We're not doing that. We are going back to horse and buggy. And the only time that there will be more than three people on that horse and buggy is when we are loading buggies of Fanta. You know, I think the Geneva Convention could have started in World War II and it could have been about Nazi Germany saying we're (laughs) pro-Fanta. Because I'm pro-Fanta. You know, in 1943, three million cases of Fanta were sold in 1943. If I was alive in 1943, I would have doubled that. I love Fanta. I do love Fanta. Uh, Let's see. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Many of the bottles were not drunk, but used to add sweetness and flavor to soups and stews. Yeah, you you could use Fanta in anything. Since uh, wartime sugar was severely rationed. Yeah. Which is interesting because it probably takes more sugar to make Fanta than they probably needed for their soups and stews. It kind of reminds me, I mean, this isn't really something I was going to talk about, but it's kind of a thing when I was, when I was welding full-time industrial lease. Anyway, I, I worked at a lot of ethanol plants and during the Bush era, ethanol had a big, bright future. My first ethanol plant I was ever on, I found out that it required 
a gallon of fuel, which could have been natural gas or propane or any kind of fuel, it took one gallon of fuel to create one gallon of ethanol. Okay, so <laughs> you're trying to save fuel, but you're creating more fuel. You're basically doubling your doubling your consumption by creating ethanol. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So you've got, and I know the emissions from natural gas and those things is considerably lower than gasoline, but you're still burning gasoline when you put it in the car. And I'm sure this is an old idea, but as soon as I heard that, I said, I, I'm going to have to find some other projects to work on because ethanol is not a future. And lo and behold, three years, uh, two years later, they quit creating ethanol plants in, in America. There might be one or two popping up every once in a while, but really ethanol is dead. In Brazil, they've been using ethanol successfully since like the early 70s, maybe even late 60s. But what they do there is they're, it, it's not corn ethanol, it's sugar ethanol, where they basically create a biofuel from the sugar cane and they distill it to create their ethanol. Now, oddly enough, a byproduct of the sugarcane ethanol is sugar. So, when they create the ethanol, it's like they also get sugar. So, out of this one ethanol plant, they've got many products coming out. There's there's the biodiesel, there's the ethanol, and then there's, you know, your grocery store sugar is coming all out of the same place. And uh, apparently their quality control must be really high because I would like to not put sugar into my coffee that also smells like, you know, grain alcohol. Not grain alcohol, but, you know, alcohol, booze. Ethanol alcohol. I would rather put my own booze in my coffee than their booze in my coffee. You can make ethanol with molasses. I can <laughs> I believe you, but I was like, I don't know, man. That's, I think molasses has killed enough people in the last hundred years. <laughs> molasses and yeast, and then you let it ferment. And Sounds then you like, strain it off, and you get... Sounds like some Canadian prison-style booze. That's actually what they were, how they were making the alcohol in uh, Boston. Man. Yeah. Disaster. I got you. And, people... and that's how some places still do it. I'm still getting some feedback about that, and, you know, the, the joke, it must have been a slow death. Man, that wall of molasses was like tsunami proportions rolling in at like 30, 40 miles an hour, knocking people at over. Feet high. At eight feet high. That's, yeah. that's, that's a rush of death. There's nothing slow about that. I imagine with it liquefied like that, it probably, I don't know, was it... I mean, we're not exactly looking back at it right now, but I mean, I, I I keep meaning to look up whether it was like still in its like boiling state or not, because that would be really inconvenient. No, actually, it was a uh, just just a storage tower. Um, oh, I got you. Okay, that tower was basically near the docks. Uh, ships would pull up, they'd pump it into the tank, and then the uh, the facility would pump it out of the tank as they used it. I got you. Well, that sounds like some pretty poor construction. I, I understand it was over its limit. But speaking of poor construction, I'm going to actually shift the uh, topic of conversation real quick. Because in Manhattan recently, speaking of poor construction, and when I say recently, I mean a couple weeks ago, uh, two Manhattan landlords basically doubled the space of one of the floors of their condos. Uh, have you ever watched Bean John Malkovich? Yes. Okay. You remember that sub level that that guy worked in floor like seven and a half or whatever it was. Yes. <laughs> These dudes did this. <laughs> Basically in being John Novich, of course, uh, they, they lowered the cost of their office space by renting a sub floor, which was only about six, you know, like five feet tall. The main character had to stoop over. Yeah, pretty hard. But yeah, this this happened in Manhattan uh, recently. Um, essentially, they 
had some uh, they had some inspectors come by to check out their handiwork because they thought this was a good idea. <laughs> And they, basically, depending on which floor you were staying on, because they literally just split a floor, an entire floor, the, the condos and an entire floor, and um, they, they went from nine units to like 18. And depending <laughs> on which floor you were on, you either had a four and a half foot ceiling or a six foot ceiling. Um, apparently, this is illegal in uh, the, the the city of Manhattan and probably everywhere else in the United States. I mean, four and a half feet. I'm six foot two. You're... Six foot six. Six foot, yeah, six. Uh, this is bad. Uh, yeah, I mean... So, uh, apparently, the inspector found the space riddled with uh, unpermitted electrical and plumbing work. I'm not sure... Yeah, yeah, so it was just, <laughs> it was like, um, you guys got to move out, we're going to be doing some construction, don't worry, you can move back in. I've got, I've got a TV that wouldn't even fit in the four and a half foot, and I'm not saying the entire TV is four and a half foot, but I would have to put it on the floor, and that would really be inconvenient for me. Um, I don't know, most people's beds I'd sit like three feet tall. You know, it's, it's just like, how how could you imagine just even being in in a floor space? Okay, I was really hoping that there would actually be some photos of it that we could show, but there's actually not to show this. Um, speaking of G being John Malkovich, um, actually, let's see what they did. They don't talk about the fine that these people did, but there was a small, small staircase connecting the two floors, which was also unapproved. Not just because it was small, but apparently the construction was very shoddy work. Um, apparently they did not grease enough palms in the Manhattan Mafia for these construction job. <laughs> I mean, I don't even understand how they got anything built. Honestly, you know. I don't understand who they got. They must have done the work themselves. I don't see a legitimate construction company saying, yeah, we could split that level for you. No, no, you know, it, either that or they they know they know somebody who is more of like a handyman who uh, hires himself out. Hey, Mari, were probably found a handyman from Southern Missouri and was just like, "Hey, uh, <laughs> seen some pretty crazy stuff on MissouriTrailerTrash dot com. I'm wondering if you guys could do any of that." <laughs> I've uh, I've seen some people do some work out here without permits that. I don't think the state of Missouri actually requires building permits. Yeah. I, I, I don't think, think we have a building code here. Um, I know in California where I grew up, there was uh, a lot of building codes. Uh, we, uh, we put a new roof, not a new roof. We just re-shingled my, uh, my grandmother's home when I was like 12, 13 or something like that. Me and my uncle did. And uh, we had to get that inspected before... You know, and of course it passed because my uncle is an, an incredible guy, not just a handyman. He, he, he's good. But um, at the same time, it's just like here you would never think about that. Somebody needs to re-shingle a home. They just jump up there and do it. Or they call some guy and they pay you. I'm going to get inspected prices. Or they pay you. you. They charge, you know, yeah. just, you know. Quality work, quality work is quality work, but then there's a point where you just kind of have to make that buffer of, I'm going to have to call an inspector. That's just my feeling about it, is like, even a small home, um, we had to get it re-roofed a long time ago, it cost a couple thousand dollars, and we didn't just call a guy, we did shop around, and I'm just like, are, are you being serious right now? You know, I understand like material costs, but I'm, the labor was outrageous. And, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, it just baffles me some of the things, but, but these guys, um, the structural changes from the uh, department of buildings, they they were uh, they were not happy with four and a half foot ceilings, period. No, I don't think anybody would be happy with four and a half foot ceilings. I don't understand 
You know, it, who, it, who, who's going in there? I mean, I, I know we have people of short stature. Uh, I mean, is that like a selling point? You know, so politically be... correct. It's not even funny. <laughs> people of short stature. Hey, you know. Are you running for president? Never. Never? Never. I watched the Democratic debates a couple days ago, and I was actually thoroughly disgusted. Not because it was Democrats. I'm very, very, very on the fence between the two, actually all parties. I, I agree with a lot of things from a lot of different parties. These people weren't saying anything, though. That I, I hear that about both sides. Yeah, we well, don't yeah. Do politics here. So. I'm not doing politics. I'm just, I'm just saying. It's just yeah. there. I am. You know, it, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's um, people of short stature. Yes, that I, that's a topic. That that's a topic for that's a topic for. I don't know. I don't even know where you talk about that anymore. People used to talk about all kinds of things, and now we just, it's just not, it's not kosher. <laughs> kosher. I don't think we can say kosher anymore. That sounds, that sounds racially driven. No, I like that word. We'll keep it. With shenanigans. Shenanigans. All right, so, do I need to carry on, or you got something to, your segues are horrible. Not My even segues are awesome. Shut you up. could, you just cut me off and dive right in. You're making my editing jobs really hard right now. That's what I strive for, to make your life terrible. Yeah, my life is right. really good. Now, you lived in Missouri longer than I have, I believe. What? 2002 is when I arrived. All right. Now, I was I was out here at this time, but I don't know if you would have heard of this story or not. This is something that took place in Gerald, Missouri. Um, so, apparently, this guy who was, I guess people started calling him Sergeant Bill. Where is Gerald, right. Missouri? I, that sounds like middle state, mid-state. Is that kind of like I an I-44 kind of town, or is that... I, I'm having trouble placing it, because Missouri has a lot of weird names for their towns, and but after you look at a map long enough, you could actually kind of decide where it's at, north or south, because you know northern Missourians kind of have more proper town names and like down here we have towns like licking <laughs> so <laughs> and kickapoo kickapoo <laughs> get out of here so where's uh, gerald uh, i'm curious i would look it up but i've got I, I would i would test my keyboard for you all but um i don't want to turn anything off it is west of st louis west of st louis cool man all right well what happened in i don't Jones? know exactly how far but it <laughs> is kansas west city of is west of st louis joplin is west of st louis st louis is on the line man i mean part of st louis dips into illinois i'm just giving you uh, a frame of wrestling yeah that's very big it lasts <laughs> Last I knew... Do, do you want me to Al map quest it so you know exactly how many hours? Albuquerque Al map quest? I don't know. I'll just ask Jeeves later. There you go. Ask Jeeves. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm sorry I <laughs> sidetracked this. I'll look up Gerald some other time. Uh, so this guy shows up saying that he's Homeland Security. And... You know, because uh, at that time they were having a drug problem in that area, meth and whatnot. At that time, and, that's consistent. Yeah. So uh, he shows up and he starts helping them with the drug problem uh, for like two months. They're raiding homes, questioning people. Uh, two and whenever months? they're like, "Oh, do you guys uh, need a warrant?" And he was like, "I'm Homeland Security. I don't need a warrant. What are you talking about?" <laughs> And apparently, they never checked him for credentials. I am above the law. <laughs> <laughs> they they never checked this guy for credentials. Uh, they, apparently, the way 
you know, the way he dressed. Uh, he had a Crown Vic with all the gear. I guess it was better geared than their cars. Shut the door. And, uh, and yeah, and uh, so they just never checked his credentials. Uh, he showed up and was like, I'm Homeland Security. And they're like, okay. <laughs> Seems legit. Let this man and, uh, through. Yeah. Um, he didn't even do like the quick badge thing where he's just like, he had a badge. I'm homeless. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and apparently the badge was from like when he was a mall cop. A mall cop. Or, well, he, 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 he worked security for something and that's, that's where he used the badge from. Oh no one looked gosh. at it closely. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, really? So, um, I mean, but overall, uh, yeah, two months, this went on, and uh, apparently someone who worked for the local paper started to, you know, like, this, this sounds just weird. So she dug into it, found out he wasn't really a, a Fed or even a, an officer at all. That's, that, uh, it's just, <laughs> uh, two and months. Of course, you know, but I mean, he was, they were like, he was doing a good job though, right? Yeah, a lot of people were happy about it. Some people obviously complaining because uh, family members of these drug dealers were being interviewed and they felt like their <sighs> rights were being violated. But of course, because there were no warrants, a lot of this probably... Well, of course, they all went free. I mean, it's, you know, it's just obvious, you know. You know, that, I mean, that's dude, that, that that's that's our justice system. I don't really find any fault in that. I feel like there needs to be due process. Um, yeah. Just because you found somebody... Um, doing something wrong does not mean that due process doesn't need to happen. You know, yeah. it's there. I know a lot of criminals get past, get by on a lot of things, but my personal opinion is, is that personal, I think it's actually majority of opinions. You know, I, now I feel I like, I feel like we need more, you know, I, the use of people like this, you know, and I don't, I really don't mean to cut you off. But, like, this guy, he came in, he was just like, oh, I'm, I'm Homeland Security. Why couldn't he have just walked in there and said, hey, I've got a list of people I know are cooking copious amounts of methamphetamine? You know, is that not, you know, if, if a guy wants to do some help and do some good in this community, why did he have to lie and you know, impersonate an officer, end up in prison himself, probably. Did he? They end up prosecuting uh, him? Oh, yeah. He okay. got prosecuted, but here's what got me. He only did five years. Only? Impersonating a federal officer? What's the typical that's a, sentence that's, on that? Death? I don't know. But that's, no, but that's toss him in Guantanamo? <laughs> that's considered a felony. You figured. Well, it's a felony, people. yeah, but so is rape, and there are people doing six months for rape. That's true. You know, this is a dude who said, I'm Homeland Security, and he goes in and does some good in his community, and they're going to throw away the key? Yeah, I would, yeah. No. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I, I just, I don't know. I was just surprised that that's all he did was. Fight. And hold on. He also went on uh, 60 Minutes. And apparently, also sold the the movie rights uh, to his story. I don't think I'm, I I searched. I didn't find any movie, so yeah, maybe it just hasn't there. Been. But apparently, someone in Hollywood bought the rights to it though, because they thought maybe at some point this could be a movie. But I mean, I don't know. Well, yeah, like that what was that movie, The Informant, with um, Matt Damon. Matt Matt. Gaming. I really, I really enjoyed that movie. The dude, basically, I, I don't know why. I don't remember a whole lot of it. I just remember enjoying it. Downsizing was another good one that he did. If you haven't watched it, do. No, it's, I have not seen that one. It's funny. You know, people like, er, I want to do good for the environment, so we'll just shrink ourselves down. It's like that makes sense. Enjoy getting eaten by cats. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't know. I thought the movie was absurd and funny at the same time. It had, um, oh, goodness gracious, what's his name? I love his movies. I don't even care what he's in. Um, Christopher Waltz. He was in um, Django Unchained. He was in that new Alita Battle Angel, okay. the German guy who just basically comes to America for Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh, man. But yeah, no, uh, I guess later I can just go ahead and Google Maps uh, where Gerald's at. Kind of like these morons in Colorado. Now, I in, I personally, it's one of my pet peeves, people complaining about GPS. Um, people rely on GPS too much, or at least in their stories that they like to tell about, ah, I used my Garmin and it took me down a dirt road and off a cliff and it ruined my car. You know, I just, I don't understand why people can't look out their windshield when using GPS, I really can't. But no, this um this actually occurred in June. I know for me that's old news. I try to keep it fresh, keep it within a week. But um, not a whole lot happened this week. Not a whole lot of interesting things oh, really we happened this week. I am moving on. This is called a segue, kind of like your <laughs> mall cop, Homeland Security guy, like to ride around on. This is where we go from one topic seamlessly into another. But and I wasn't done yet, Todd. Are you serious? You seemed done. There was a pause. Well, that's because you started talking and then just... I had a lot to say. And then you just immediately segued into something else. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize we were done. I, it sounded like he was done after he sold the movie rights to a movie that'll never get made. Uh, I just had a couple more things. One being... Well, I want to hear it. I'm interested. Of course, of course, according to the police, none of them knew uh, that that he was a fraud. Well, why would they? However, I didn't check. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> according, however, according to Mr. Jacob, uh, the sheriff and the chief of police were both in and on it. That they, they knew, and they helped him get set up with his uh, identity. Okay, so this guy was a fraud built by their... To Gerald Police Department. Uh, according to him, uh, he said oh. he wasn't alone in on it. Um, that was part of his defense. Uh, I guess him and his lawyer's defense during his trial was that he wasn't alone on this. It wasn't just him that he had met uh, the sheriff prior, and they they hit it off. And apparently, this was a plan they came up with. They hit it off. Would they meet on Grinder? Because this was a really dumb idea. <laughs> it's like, we're going to swipe right on this guy. Let's see what's up. Hey, man, what's going on? Uh, you know, meeting you in person, you're really not my type. But, hey, what would you think about maybe impersonating a Homeland Security officer? Because uh, we need to move our drug problem along here. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's... What did they say? I mean, did they manage to prove that, yeah, that, yeah, they um, were in on it? I mean, does it go on to say anything about that? Because this guy is obviously lying through his teeth. That's the basis of his charges. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, um, just, I guess negligence was, because uh, the, the sheriff and other people that were involved in that were immediately fired. Uh, once all this, they're like, you should have checked. They're like, you let okay. this guy roll in. So, like, okay, I understand the negligence thing and, and firing people for negligence, also, but uh, basically, and during the court process, uh, fines were thrown at uh, the guy pretending to be and the, those in charge involved because they're like, look, this is partly your fault. Whether you, you say you knew or not, you should have checked. So, uh, all kinds of fines and stuff were thrown at all those involved. So they didn't even bother to investigate on whether this guy was created or acting alone. The article I'm saying doesn't go in the full depth. Whether oh, okay. or not. I was just curious because I mean that I would watch that movie. <laughs> like if you know all you know, like the police chief and the sheriff and stuff like that were just like we got to get a guy we need to get a guy in here that looks we need to make him a car we just got to you know they they create their own fraud i would watch that movie but um yeah just some dude waking up and saying uh i think i'm going to be homeland security and clean I mean, up the town you know i th i wouldn't watch that Apparently, he even gave them three different uh, contact numbers from him. He had his personal cell phone, a cell phone he said he used for drug informants, and his multi-jurisdictional task force cell phone. <laughs> I'm going to give you the number for my confidential informants. 
Here, this is my confidential informant phone. This is what I like to call my CIP. <laughs> this guy's hey, before you go. All right. <laughs> that guy's an idiot. I'm serious. <laughs> I don't right, know. No. That, that that's interesting though. It really is. But um I'm I'm Oh and I, I will shout out uh Nathan, uh, one of our coworkers pointed me in the direction of this story. That's a good one, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, you know. Uh, yeah, apparently, Nathan is uh, semi-related to this guy. This guy was married to Nathan's cousin. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, was yeah. married? Is this a is this a revenge story? Is I don't, this? I, don't uh, know I wanna. There's, I wanna let everyone I don't know. If know. He's still in the family or not? I, still but, in the family. Still in the family. I don't know. I don't I'll, know. I'll have to ask him. Yeah. Yeah, no, I would, if, if Nathan actually knows more about this story, I'd be willing to have him on to talk about this one, actually. I think that would be awesome. <laughs> nice. I really uh, do. I'll talk with Nathan, see what he says. Yeah, or, yeah, he could just, he could just, I don't know. He can. We'll figure it out. But, um, <laughs> that's funny. But no, in Colorado, I'm going to go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and move on now. I have permission. I got a thumbs yeah. up. I got a thumbs yeah. up, but just like, yeah. just like uh, thumbs ups on other websites, I like to give thumbs and then take them away. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll, I'll go on to like random YouTube channels. The dude has like no subscribers and has like three videos or something like that. Not really naming anybody in particular, but <laughs> I like to click the thumb up and then wait a couple hours and then go back and take my thumb away. It's like. Yeah, that is me. You got a viewer. Wow, take it away. That's like, cruelty. Man. Take it away, Sam. <laughs> just bring their hopes up and then dash it. That is just yeah. I like cruel. to sit back like Dick Tracy and tell my girl Friday to yeah, take that thumb away now. You know, as I sit back in my easy chair smoking my Camel non filters or whatever. I don't know. Hey, right, <laughs> the jig is up. They know what's going on. All right. Jesus, it's cops. <laughs> but in Colorado, like I was um, actually kind of saying a little bit, uh, it, it's weird because I, I it, this honestly does bother me that people like to just give full dependence to Google Maps or their TomTom Tom or whatever their navigation software of choice, hardware or whatever. You're in the car and you're driving. There's a windshield. And when you peer through this windshield, you see obstacles or bad ideas. If Google Maps or Siri or whatever likes to say, hey, I want to take you down this dirt road. You're just kind of like, I don't really want to. I don't really want to drive down that dirt road. You know, my I've got this uh, 62 Impala that I've slammed on the ground and it's a half inch clearance. I don't, I'm not driving that direction. Apparently, a hundred people. In Colorado, two weeks ago, decided to all listen to their Google Maps and drive directly into a mud hole. This occurred. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. A hundred people. And what I was saying about windshields, a woman was interviewed. Let me see here. Uh, Monsis. What was it? There's no first name. Oh, Connie Monsies. Um, She described on ABC News. I recently discovered we probably should have more uh, more sources. But anyway, uh, they pulled up pulled up Google Maps trying to get to the Denver International Airport, and um, they're trying to find a good way to get there. And apparently, Google Maps decided the best way to go is st straight through this field. And, of course, it had been raining a lot lately all over the country. And it basically was a mud truck dream. Because there was gridlock traffic in this field of mud. Of course, every car in there was stuck. And uh, they were always, there. of course, you know, you're always looking for a better way to get somewhere. But sometimes the best way is just on the highway. 
you know, you could pull up Google Maps and it says like, you can go this way to get there on this highway and it's going to take 10 to 15 minutes longer than driving through this mountain pass with a rickety rope bridge. And, but that, that direction is going to technically save you 10 minutes. You know, I, I hear this a lot and it's, it's, a, it's, it actually does piss me off. You know, I hear these stories and they're just like, oh, it, it, it took me off, you know, it, it told me to drive through this lake. So I did and it ruined my car. I'm suing. It's like, <laughs> come on now. Come on. <laughs> common sense. But common sense does not, you know, I, I, I get it. Weed is legal. Um, in <laughs> Colorado, these people. That has nothing to do with it. These people weren't high. A hundred people in a mud, you know, in a mud pit. I'm not saying that they weren't high. I'm just saying I know plenty of people who smoke weed and they can still use cotton. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> that's neat. You use common sense. Common sense. Is that what they call what they put into the vending machine? Like 25 cents? 25 common sense? <laughs> Maybe. 50 maybe. common sense. All right. So, <laughs> but anyway, these people just kept driving. And well, what, did, what did old Monsi say? He says, I'm following this line of cars. And my thought was, well, there's so many other people going. It must be all right. And <laughs> I, the windshield, you've got to make your own decisions in life, people. You have to. You don't follow the herd. If the herd is heading towards certain doom, <laughs> you know, uh, there are plenty of just happy cows walking up the ramp to get, you know, a big bullet in their head to make hamburger. It's not, it's not something we need to be doing. Don't listen. Do not listen to your GPS. And if you do listen to your GPS and it takes you off a cliff, and destroys your car, and you're late for your Mary Kay party you were going to. <laughs> if all of those things coincide and create this story that you feel like you need to come and share with me personally, and and this is just a public announcement, don't share these stories. You know, now that my opinion is out there, I am going to call you stupid. I, I'm just going to let you know. I mean, I don't know. Do you, do, do, have you ever heard these stories? This seems like a very common thing. Not a hundred, not a hundred people, but like that one person, that one person was like, it told me to do this and I did it. And now I'm late. No, I've never. Are you serious? I mean, I've heard secondhand, like some stories, like, you, you know, a person turning the wrong way or, but nothing like that. Well, I, I'm not even really particularly calling like this, but, um, you know, of course, the person who wrote the article was just like, uh, I don't really think it's Google's fault this happened. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah exactly. Just throw that out there, you know. Uh, I do re realize that, um, I do recall, don't realize, I realized that when I looked it up, walking directions used to be a thing on Google Maps. I don't know if you're aware of this. But walking directions that used to be able to tell you how to walk places. Um, I don't know how many years ago it was, but you could actually walk to Hawaii. Um, any location. <laughs> <laughs> they had walking directions. It, it took you up to the, the closest point, you know, of the co of coastlines. And I believe it was in Oregon somewhere, which is like the closest you can get to Hawaii. And then it told you to get a kayak and paddle some 2,000 miles and then, you'd <laughs> and then you'd arrive at your destination hopefully hey, person asked for it and they were like all right we'll deliver yeah google google's always there for you unfortunately they're there for you whether you like it or not <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah google did what? release a statement that said they are not responsible for the quality of roads that google maps sends you down it's legit. It is legit. So people don't come with me with stories how you're going to lawyer up and sue whatever navigation service that you decided to listen to because the robot doesn't know. Um, 
Now, I, I did have a friend. Uh, this was 2009 when my wife and I were getting married. And I told people. I told people. I said, don't. Don't rely on your phone for anything out here. I, I'm <laughs> sure if you'll get service. Um, and a friend kind of forgot about that. He was oh. using his iPhone uh, for GPS. And now it didn't tell him to turn anywhere funny, but it did bring him down one of them back dark county roads. Oh, yeah. And and at some point he lost service and didn't realize it. And all of a sudden he was on this dark county road and the GPS says, <laughs> You have arrived at your destination, and he was like, <laughs> uh, "No, <laughs> you are here." <laughs> I've so seen, he a, stop, seen some horror stop, movies yeah. that started out like that, <laughs> <laughs> and he stopped at like some farmhouse and asked for directions. And I'm like, "Dude, that's kind of that's kind of shady." Uh, you know where Joel thing. lives. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he ended up finding his way. But he had been here once before, and he was just like. This is definitely not my destination. I agree. <laughs> I agree. So, but that, I figured that was just a funny GPS story. You just is. completely forgot about the whole phone thing. And See, that's that's funny. That's legitimate. I would be willing to listen to that story for two minutes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but don't. Did I come under the two minute mark? Please, I, minute. I, I don't know. I, I just it just bothers me. I don't oh, know why no. it bothers me. You know, it's just because people are putting blind faith in something and in technology. Just, yeah, it's like it, they've it, never watched uh, Terminator or iRobot or for the Matrix. Or you know, we've got so many warnings throughout the years. Just don't blind faith in technology. Skynet is here. Uh, it is. All right. Yeah, your turn, man. I'm done before I completely start raving. Okay, I, I I was uh just looking at it, and I saw one that just popped up two minutes ago. Ooh, fresh solid gold toilet worth one million, named America, stolen from Winston Churchill's birthplace. Wait, what? Winston Churchill? I thought that was uh, Saddam Hussein who had the golden toilet. I was tripping all over my words. I don't know why golden toilet is so hard to say right now. Where is the birthplace of Winston Churchill? Quick trivia. Apparently Oxford, England. Oh, okay. Well, that was easy. Aside from London, isn't Oxford the only other city in England? <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, Manchester and all those places are just, like, suburbs of London. So there's, like, that... I honestly thought Oxford... I think it's just all just one big city mass right there. That's why they can't... That's why they got to import everything. It's just because they just put concrete everywhere so where did this toilet did they find it or is this that fresh where they're just like oh this golden toilet is gone uh let's see they're uh they're on the hunt uh the piece of art that has been stolen it's considered art okay there's a high value toilet made out of gold that was on display at the palace hmm. uh due to the toilet being plumbed into the building this has caused significant damage and flooding oh so it um, was it was functional art yeah. Hmm. Uh, police say a 66-year-old man was arrested in connection with the theft. However, the 18-carat carat gold toilet, titled America, remains missing. Wait, what? Golden toilet is titled America? Yes, sir. I think somebody's still a little saucy about the little thing that happened in 1776. Thank you. Yeah. I kept wanting to say 72, but that was a completely different, unrelatable thing. But yeah, you know, when we signed the Declaration of Independence, they really need to look at the fine print that said, other nations cannot create golden toilets and call it America. <laughs> if it's bound to be in there. We've changed it enough. Not the deck. Nah, I don't know. It's like an amendment. That's but that's just that's just weird. But I wonder yeah, how so much that thing weighed. Is this like the Blarney Stone? I mean, it says it's made out of solid gold, so I mean, it'd have to be pretty heavy. Yeah, no kidding. Is it a? I mean, it's a functioning toilet. I mean, maybe maybe it's a smaller toilet for maybe people of small stature. I'm looking at a picture of it, and it doesn't look that tiny. It looks like a regular sized toilet, uh, one you would see like in a public restroom. And, yeah, it's got like the, in my bathroom. In your the bathroom, plumbing up behind it with the with the handle. 
That's interesting. I think that they, I think that they really solid gold toilet named America. I'm actually kind of pissed now. At least they made it out of gold and. Yeah, you know, that's kind of like, you know, the whole whitewashing a tomb thing is, I think, is what they're trying to show us. <laughs> all it's just like, oh, you guys are, think you're all that. And it's like, well, we are all that. We are, we didn't, we didn't call ourselves America because we're a bunch of wimps. <sighs> yeah, I know that was a little uneducated. I don't know where we call ourselves America, but, you know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> America. I don't know. That that just seems a gold toilet name. I'm I'm actually probably going to write my senator about that one. <laughs> so, hey, uh, just, are you, are you, are just you an offended? open letter. Just an open letter to all political candidates right now. If you want to win, if you want my vote, do something about this gold toilet. Or maybe that's what did happen. Could we Maybe. actually yeah. suspect that quite possibly, since it was labeled America, that they one of these... Tom Cruise on a mission in I was going to go it. with some of these weird hillbillies who just feel like possession is nine-tenths of the law, and <laughs> uh, if I steal it, it becomes mine, because I have it. Mm? So is that going to show up in your bathroom, Todd? Is that what went on here? Absolutely not. Uh, that sort of grand theft is beyond my motivation of activities. Especially going overseas for it. I would go overseas, but I probably wouldn't go to steal toilets. I already have a <laughs> toilet. Even if it's a solid gold toilet? Worth that, over a million dollars? Like I just said, that sounds heavy. <laughs> That's you know? a lot of lifting. It's a lot of lifting. I don't believe that my current occupation and employer would approve of me lifting a solid gold toilet by myself. That would either be a team lift or I would need a hoist. Yeah, you definitely need a hoist. Yeah. I mean, it's getting to the point where it's like, can I even like pick up my feet when I walk? No. Okay. No, no. You must know. slide or shuffle. Slide or shuffle. Kill. Little... <laughs> you ever heard the term? And I'm not. I don't know. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm going to bring it up. You ever heard the term lead in your ass? Yes. What do you think of when you hear that? Buckshot. No, no I mean, like, seriously. Like, I don't know. know. Somebody's got a little lead in their ass. Get the lead out of your ass. Yeah, get yeah. the lead out. Okay, so I mean, what, that implies that that person is slow. Yes. Right? Okay. I recently found out that there is a group of people who believe that somebody who has lead in their ass is actually working hard. I would win. I I don't know. I I heard this and the group of people I was around actually considered it. Yeah, that person is working harder than everyone else. It's like looks like somebody's got a little lead in their ass. If you personally, you person watching this in the literally post in the comment section what you think letting your ass means because I personally am confused by this because I thought a hundred percent of the world's population believed that that term meant that that person was slow, that yeah, they were dragging the lead out. That means yeah, pick get, it up. Yeah. Pick it up. But if you have lead in your ass, have you already mm -hmm. picked it up? No, because you need to get it out. Not really sure. So anyway, I was actually, um, I was going to move on to something else. But I, I don't know when we started talking about weights and things. Um, rut row. Dun dun dun. Uh, <laughs> no, I was actually no the um the the gold toilet monetary value and nine tenths of the law that actually reminded me of what I was going to talk about, and that is the um the couple. I believe it was in Georgia. I don't have the article pulled up, so I can't remember exactly. But I actually found a lot of people who have made this misconception. And um, I don't remember. You remember on our Facebook page uh, who shared the story of the couple who ended up getting X amount of dollars in their bank account? I'll have to look it up and I'll thank you later, guy. 
on Facebook. But um, no, he was he was talking about. Um, Is that the one off our Facebook page? Yes, that <laughs> that's Brandon Secret. I'm sorry. I was... Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Is that the one off our face? Yeah, guy on Facebook. No, yeah, our Facebook page, which, oh, <laughs> anyway. I don't know. They could have posted directly to you. I'm if, just making sure. That's if Brandon, you, by the way. Brandon, thank you, Brandon, for informing me about the uh, the couple. I believe it was in Georgia recently. This is more recently. But I, you know, I, I couldn't really form a whole topic around it. So, therefore, I had to look up more people. And, of course, these people in Georgia who, um, I believe it was Georgia. I could be completely wrong on that, but essentially the bank deposited a hundred grand into their account by mistake and they spent it. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, finders, keepers, losers, weepers, right? You know, you, you look at your account and you're just like, holy cow, I'm a hundred thousand dollars in the hole. Wait a minute. No, I actually have a hundred thousand dollars. You know, I feel like people who take advantage of bank mistakes are probably used to being in the negative. You know what I'm, I mean? And not to mention, uh, I, I did read a little bit about that. Yeah. You know, they were dodging calls from the bank. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they like, spent it as quick as they could. You know, and that that's weird because it's it's a mistake. Okay. If I was going to the gas station and I was getting gas and let's say I just got paid and I was like, okay, this is the X amount of money that I, I'm going to spend this week. And I've got like a hundred dollar bill in my, my, uh, you know, whatever in, in my wallet. So I, I, I open my wallet or do something for some unknown reason on my way in and I drop that said hundred dollar bill. Somebody picks it up. What would you want to happen in that occurrence? Would you want somebody to just be like, hey, hey, that guy lost $100? Or would you want somebody to be like, hey, man, uh, you just dropped 100 bucks? You know, people believe that banks just have just an excessive amount of money, and they don't. It's all our money. That's somebody else's money. It's not their money. It's somebody else's money that showed up in your bank account. But seriously, what would you do? I'm actually a very honest person. I have before found a good sized stack of cash and I returned it. Ooh. Under what grounds? Just being a good person or yeah. did you have, oh, okay. I was just wondering because personally, I, I should be a better person, but a lot of times, the majority of the time, I'm not really thinking be a good person. I'm just saying just do the right thing. I understand that makes you a better person, but that's not really – there's a difference in my driving goal to try to be honest. Um, I don't know. That's a, that's a whole different thing. But this is actually more common occurrence than people would think. I, I, I think that the majority of people probably – I think that this happens a lot more than it's actually said, and it is said quite a bit online. But I think the majority of the people are like you, are like me. They're like, oh, man, there's, there's $80, $80 billion in my bank account. This doesn't seem right. I better call the bank. And they're like, yeah, well, my, my bad. Uh, that, that's going to the, um, I, I don't know, some, some terrible person's defense fund or something. But, you know, that sizable amount of money never really seems to go anywhere good. But there was a kid in... Um, in North Carolina, 18 years old also, and this happened also this year, $20,000, $25,000 deposited into his account. Um, he, when, they, when they caught up with him four days later, he discovered it first, probably the same day, because he wrote two checks for $10,000 for cash. Got that, blew up his debit card, spent it all. They caught up with him, 18 years old now. I mean, this guy is, I'm, I'm assuming that he's not living with mom and dad just primarily on the basis of what ended up happening. He said, yes, I understand the mistake. I will pay the bank back. We will resolve it. They decided that we don't need to get the police involved. He said he would pay it back. Um, weeks later, no, no money, no money at all. So they do get the cops involved. A little too late. 
Kid Skip Town, 18 years old, already on the run for stealing $25,000. I mean, what? This is like, <laughs> where are you going to run with twenty five grand in this day and yeah. age? Where Mexico. Mexico. Um, 18-year-old white kid in Mexico is not going to get very far with $25,000. You would be, he would have better luck having $25,000 in a, a, in like a, I don't know, a a pillowcase and going and living (laughs) on the streets of Detroit. You know, (laughs) I'm not saying he would do well. I'm just saying, (laughs) oh, okay. It's like $25,000 goes far in Mexico. I'm just saying. It goes, it goes just as about as far until somebody finds out that you have it. Yes. Um, I spent some time in Mexico in 2000 when I was living in Texas. We went there more or less kind of frequently. Um, Just like weekend trips, kind of had fun down there. And um, I don't know when the crime shifted, but as a 19-year-old kid, 18, 19 years old, uh, just making little day trips down to Mexico to hang out, uh, we'd go down there and buy groceries. Uh, I was living in Abilene. It was a couple-hour drive. But... Yeah, $25,000, you could probably retire back then. I don't know exactly what the exchange rate is. I can't expect it to be any better. It isn't. (laughs) But (laughs) interesting thing about uh, U.S. Customs at the border, the border crossing, um, you can, interesting fact, one of the guys uh, I used to go with, he used to buy cartons of cigarettes he'd buy marlboros for like seven bucks um typically it was from a small child on a corner and um anyway he had uh five cartons he had one on the dash four behind his seat they searched the vehicle they found the four cartons behind the seat they removed the one on the dash because taxes weren't paid you know it it doesn't make any sense. We still we we can it kind of baffled us. Like uh, why uh, why take why take the one and not take them all? I don't know. I don't know what the customs laws are, but it still kind of baffles me. And that was a long time ago. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna age myself now. But um, but yeah, no. If you if you manage to uh, get a bunch of money in your bank account, please please return it. Don't go on the run. You know, <laughs> there, there is actually a lot of people, a lot of people who this actually happens to. You got to pay that money back. Um, under the law, it is a clerical error, which, uh, yeah, yeah, that I don't know whether, stealing. yeah, I don't know whether it's federal law or just every state has the same law that it could go either way, but it, it's stealing. I don't know why it's stealing. Because, like I said, if you drop a hundred dollar bill, somebody's going to pick it up and say finders keepers. Maybe that's stealing. I'm not sure. Um, I guess the same principle applies if you leave your lawnmower outside. Nobody can just go pick it up. I don't. I don't, I don't know. I I don't know. I'm not saying that people should just be able to keep money that they find on a on an error, but um, don't. It's big trouble. It is huge trouble. Could you imagine getting arrested for stealing a hundred thousand dollars cash? You know what the amount of time that they would give you? Are you looking that up? No, I am not looking that up. Would you like me to? No, I really don't. You were just looking. You were just staring very attentively. Just, I was just staring at the monitor. I got you. All right, I'll shut up now. You can you can talk now for a while. <laughs> That's all I have to say about people stealing money from banks. Oh, that I, even I, I if you're how close to the end we were, you could just interrupt me. I don't, I don't know how. Oh, we're not. <laughs> we're not. We're not. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to talk about something really goofy that I saw. I like goofy. Florida man uses wanted poster as Facebook profile pic. Now, this wasn't like... Hold on, was it his wanted poster? Or yes. Shit. And it was a current wanted poster. Not like this was back when I was on the on the run, Fugitive. This is... I'm currently a Fugitive from Justice. 
here's my here's my uh <laughs> it's my mugshot and wanted poster that I'm going to use as my Facebook page. You've got to be pretty legit to actually have a wanted poster. I mean, there's like a warrant out for you. They don't just start printing out wanted posters because you have unpaid traffic tickets. This dude did something. Yeah, I or- mean, and he, he decides to post it as his Facebook page. A photo like, hey. <laughs> and they were able to track him down. Because of this Facebook usage. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and and of course people kept talking about it, so it kept the page active and or that particular part post active and <laughs> yeah. We're... Wow. Wow. <laughs> Police are looking for me. I'm gonna post this up on my Facebook. Okay. Check this out, dumb coppers. <laughs> you can't catch me. Oh my gosh. That actually reminds me of uh, El Chapo Guzman when he escaped prison in Mexico that last time. Um, He was in uh, Costa Rica or Puerto Rico or one of those islands that probably should be part of the U.S. but isn't. Uh, He was having lunch with his son and um, a few other of his associates. And uh, it was his son who actually posted the picture on Twitter. Um, with location. Um, now this, that particular issue did not, um, that particular post did not actually lead to the capture of El Chapo, but we never heard from El Chapo's son again. Coincidence? There was, yeah, I mean, I, with the whole tunnel escape, the whole construction crew, the whole, you know, Air, you know, the air supplied tunnel with the motorcycle and electric, electric lighting from his escape. I followed El Chapo on Twitter after that. And I quite a few of his associates because they were all on there on Twitter. They love Twitter. And uh, <laughs> I, I followed it for a while and I was like, man, this guy, this guy is hysterical. I mean, he would just basically gripe about, you know, um, soccer a lot. Um <laughs> No, I was, yeah, you know, it wasn't Priorities, like, man. Priorities. It wasn't like, oh, here we are making a multi-billion dollar cocaine deal. You know, it was nothing like that. Or look at these guys we killed today. It was basically, um, I want to kill that goalie. Or, you know, and it's like, <laughs> El Chapo said, I want to murder this goalie for losing this match. I would probably quit sports altogether i wouldn't even play like, i wouldn't even play foosball at the bar coincidentally 10 minutes later this goalie for this team retires <laughs> yeah i would quit like right then I, uh, i'm not I, feeling good enough to play soccer anymore uh i retire <laughs> it'd be like right in the middle of the match if it was me it was like oh man we're gonna take a break and dudes like on the sidelines hey 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 uh, el chapo says that you should be dead i would quit. and i'm out yeah i would just i would just yeet on out of there <laughs> I, I was like i'm done for real really done i made my own exit just followed the disc cloud <laughs> out but out. yeah no there's no more uh no more twitter no more twitter uh any social media from el chapo's son that son i don't remember his name offhand but after that it was he was gone it's like there was, there's been reports that he's missing. Um, I'm not saying that he was murdered. I just think that maybe he had to lay low for a little while after that screw up. I'm done talking about that. I guess I need to actually signal and not just. <laughs> Did it say what that um, that particular guy was wanted for? Um, two counts of battery. Oh man, selling illegal batteries. <laughs> so that terrible. Illegal battery charging, kind of like in yeah, Shazam, yeah. like Shazam. Your battery's charged. Your battery's charged. <laughs> that, that was just. Oops. My, that was my favorite. That was my favorite part. <laughs> I, that's all I've got today. That. That's, what are you finding? 
Woman arrested after asking police to test her drugs for Ebola. Shut up. That's not real. Chastity Eugenia Hobson was uh, so worried that her possibly tainted meth <sighs> that she actually contacted the police about it. Shut up. That. Come on. That. No, that's not. That's not a thing. Oh, it is. Apparently. The Texas, uh, there was a police department in Texas that were trying to catch, basically, they're like, let's see if we can shake loose any dumb meth users, and they paste, posted a fake Facebook story about I think, Ebola. I think this story that. is fake. And, uh, the, my reason for, my reason for saying it, I mean, what, did they actually, do they have a picture of her? Where, where is this source from? Hold on, let me see if I can confirm. Please confirm. Because, and while you're confirming, I'm going to tell you why I believe this is fake. I've read this type of story many times online. And we have these reoccurring stories that pop up that just seem so unbelievable they can't be true. And it's like, it's probably because they're not. They, you know, there's your average drug user addict is not that concerned I, i'm just I'm, i don't see how they could be the this story is popping up on multiple like news. yeah well yeah the it spreads you know when things go viral true or not it spreads but like like on legit news pages oh god i i don't know i don't know what's real anymore you know, it's kind of like Ozzy Osbourne being in the new Post Malone song or whatever, and people being like, "Oh man, who's this unknown artist?" I mean, he's got a mugshot. It's really really gonna... Is it? Yeah. I I just I just have these trouble. I I just have trouble believing these stories anymore because it is just too absurd, and there's so yeah. many of them. Like I was you saying, remember, Todd, there's a lot of stupid people on this planet. Maybe I just have more faith in people's intelligence than I really should. You know, um, even the dumbest people have moments of clarity. Yeah, but you to, you'd remember, too, that there was a string of... Uh, remember that whole joke about someone posted the thing where... You can charge your iPhone in the microwave. You know how many stupid people tried that? A lot. I don't consider yeah. myself an overly intelligent person, but I understand that if I stick a fork in the microwave, it blows up. Maybe not in like a whatever Steven Seagal and under siege throwing a bunch of paint cans in there and creating a nuclear explosion, but damage happens and fires can start. That's because of metal. Because the fork is metal. I've put plastic forks in there. I didn't do it. Not as a test, but just as uh, I don't feel like taking this plastic fork out. Of course, it did melt the plastic fork and ruin my ramen. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, I'm just... All right, look. I, we, but you would know, of course, not to put a living creature in a microwave, right? I don't want to go into these babies in the microwave stories. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, there, there was a woman who put a dog in a microwave. To dry it off? She, to dry it off. God, are you serious right now? Yeah. Uh, so, Pete, it was stuff that you would think would, like, no way someone would do that. There, you, Believe it, someone out here has done it. Where do you think all these warning labels on products come from? People who have actually done these things. I get it, you know, and you know, like I said, so I when you're looking at a curling iron and yeah. do not stick this into your bodily orifice, that's because somebody has. Really? You you, yeah. get a, you went with a curling iron example? I oh yeah, I would have gone with like the white bucket with the uh, "Don't drown your baby in this." <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that just reminds me of all the stories of people going to the ER for light bulbs. You know, <laughs> it's just like, ah, I fell on this light bulb. You know, yep. I don't know. That's that's brutal. Like I said, it, it's sometimes you just can remember You're right. there's always at least one yeah. person dumb enough. And I get it. 
on the internet, you know, it only takes one person to say this person was stupid and then it gets shared. And I, I understand how all that works. I just have so much trouble believing that after things go viral of that nature, that it becomes a thing where people are still doing it. You know, after, after Kanye West did the song with um, Paul McCartney and there was the whole thing of, oh, I can't believe... Big shout out to this new artist. Nice to see him getting started so late in life. You know, who's this Paul McCartney guy? I don't understand how after that, and these are the same people, because this is Kanye West fans. These are the same people who probably listen to Post Malone, and the same thing is happening with the Ozzy Osbourne song. I don't listen to Post Malone. I don't listen to Kanye West. But this is online, and therefore it gets repeated. Why do we repeat things instead of just saying, I don't really want to look stupid online. I'm going to look this up and see who it is. Oh, Ozzy Osbourne is a rock legend who invented metal. Maybe this isn't a new artist. Maybe he's been around for a thousand years. You know, I same with Paul McCartney. He was the Beatles. I mean, come on. Come on. You know, it. I'm not saying that he's universally known that people are born, uh, I would just like to say, you know, that uh, ignorance runs rampant on all sorts of things. Like, I, w- I was sitting in the room with a conversation where someone went, Jimi Hendrix is black? <laughs> yes. Yes, he is. And you know this person, by the way. It's not me. No comment. No, it's not you. <laughs> I'm... I'm, 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 and I I'm done. I'm he, done. He this was somebody. this was this was the verbal nonsense podcast. I'm Let's not going to point it. at nobody, but uh, he does watch our podcast. So, uh, hey, guy, big shout out to you. So yeah, this was a verbal nonsense podcast. I'm Joel. Yeah, this is definitely time to end. I am Todd. Uh, check us out. Check us out on Facebook. I don't know. like like if you liked it. If you didn't like it, just keep watching every episode we are uh we're a little more successful than i thought we'd be just saying by just saying just by every view and that that came from you personally you i'd like to thank you but um no we do have yeah, a facebook for- page uh i'll i'll I'm going to start posting links. I'm going to start posting timestamps so that you guys can skip a lot of things that you don't want to listen to and um that's it that's it Appreciate it. See you later. He'll wave. I'm not. I'm going to click the stop button. Thank you for watching.